Athena was originally an arcade game before being ported to the NES and a few other platforms of the day, like the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum. You play as Princess Athena, platform around some janky levels, finding secrets and power-ups, and fight the boss at the end of each stage. Pretty standard stuff. The game was popular in Japan in the mid-80s, but has aged to be a basic and mostly forgotten arcade game. Today, though, we'll be taking a close look at the NES port, so let's see what's up. The NES port of Athena has all the standard degradations one would expect when compared to the arcade original. Muted colors, less graphical fidelity, less fluid movement, and less spectacular animations, etc. But the game is mostly all here. On the surface, it looks promising. And that is really the thing I think that sets Athena back the most for me. There are far worse games on the NES, but Athena looks like it should be better than it is. You get reeled in because maybe you remember the arcade version fondly, or you saw the box art and thought, well, that's gotta be decent. And you saw the back of the box and thought, yeah, still looks decent. But then you start actually playing the game and realize that, oh no, oh no, not decent. Gameplay-wise, it just feels off. Moving left and right is fine, no problem there, but jumping is odd. Press A once to jump. Press A again to jump higher. Press A a third time and we're jumping normal again. The alternating jump height with each press can lead to some shaky confidence when it comes to jumping anywhere in this game, especially since Athena isn't very responsive. On top of that, some of the weapons feel like you're trying to fan yourself in church rather than take a hearty swing at an enemy, and while there are some weapons that really work well, the basic ones force you into some finicky close quarters combat that butts right up against some fickle hit detection, which in turn leads to plenty of frustrations. This results in an experience that winds up much harder than it should be. Of the more aggravating things in the game is the level design. While I don't mind a fork in a platforming path, akin to a Sonic the Hedgehog level, I have never felt so lost in a game that looks like it should be a simple A to B ordeal. There are dead ends all over, especially in the underwater level where I almost never figured out where to go. Where in most platformers, falling in a hole marks the end for you, in Athena, you often just land in a different floor of the level. There were times I would have rather died when falling so I could start the level over rather than continually become lost in a meandering maze that can often lead to dead ends with no means of going backward. Again, that's not to say everything about the game is a disappointment. Some of the enemies look neat, like this evil red grimace. It has some really neat power-up attacks too, and it has some eye-catching animations and use of color. Even the atmosphere of different stages earns at least a passing grade, as each one has a unique theme and vibe. While the title of Athena would lead you to expect more mythological type enemies here, you do get things like a giant octopus or a giant tree to fight. I don't know what it says about me, but I really do enjoy a boss fight against angry trees or octopi. Not even joking though, for real, seriously, sign me up for those two types of boss enemies any day of the week. On top of the unintuitive level design, enemies are also relentless. It's one of those games where you can't move an inch on screen without having to stop to defend yourself from an enemy flying right for you. Because of this, levels become a battle of attrition, and you just hope your life bar can survive until you make it to the end. As you go, you can pick up various weapons and defenses to help you out, and those can be leveled up over time. Clubs, magic, fire sticks, swords, and a bow can all be found and wielded. You can find armor, a helmet, and a shield to protect you a little on your adventure as well. Unfortunately, if you finish a level, all of your equipment disappears for the next level, unless you find the letter K somewhere in the level, which allows you to hold on to your stuff. I guess K stands for keep? On top of being a bit tricky to navigate, the levels are timed at 5 minutes, which should seem like enough, but sometimes isn't, so be on the lookout for hourglasses to extend your time. As for the story, well... Athena, the uh, goddess of wisdom, has grown dull with her life in the castle and wants to venture out into the fantasy world to essentially fight everyone. Seriously, the manual says she was bored, wanted to go find weapons so she could kill stuff, and eventually declare herself princess of victory. So how's that for motivation? In the end... 
I just didn't meld with Athena. And there are so many better adventure platformers out there that I don't think I can recommend it. There's enough meat on the bones here that I'm sure if you grew up with it, you learned to appreciate its shortcomings. But if you're going in blind, you might have a tough time liking it. Well, that's going to do it for Athena on the NES. As always, trees and octopi make the best stage bosses. And thanks for watching.